Eve and Christmas Day. Well, obviously they didn't include coming to church. But what about after you leave church tonight? What are your plans for spending this holiday? Will we be rushing home in order to put the finishing touches on some preparations for a gathering with family? Will you be piling into your car in order to head to go visit some relatives, maybe even go to a different state? Do your plans for Christmas include opening presents tonight or tomorrow morning? Do they involve a, a special meal or maybe even two meals or three meals that are special with special people? Christmas tends to be a very busy day on the calendar. We tend to pack an awful lot in to Christmas Eve and Christmas Day. We, we try to squeeze every last moment out of, out of this occasion, do no. And all that busyness, it, it all seems to be in keeping with the busyness of that very first Christmas, doesn't it? We heard in that lesson from Luke chapter 2 just how busy it was, how many things were going on at the birth of the Savior. Mary and Joseph hurrying from Nazareth down to Bethlehem in order to, to not just simply answer the decree of a, a Caesar, but to fulfill prophecy. And while they were there, the birth of Mary's first child, big event, lots of activity. In addition to that, there were shepherds who were watching their flocks that night. And suddenly an angel appeared to them and announced that there was this Savior who had been born in Bethlehem. And so off they sped to go and find this Savior. And then when they found him and marveled at that little infant, they, they just couldn't keep it to themselves. They had to be busy sharing that news about this child with everyone that they ran into in Bethlehem. It was a busy day that first Christmas, wasn't it? And so the busyness of our Christmas celebrations it seems to just be in keeping, right? But is all the busyness of our Christmas celebrations, is it all really in line and, and of a piece with that busyness of the first Christmas? After all, all of the busyness on that first Christmas, it all centered on that one child in that one manger in Bethlehem. It all centered on that, that Son of God who had come into this world in order to save sinners, as we've heard in all of those lessons. All of the busyness was centered on that one child. What about all of our business? What about all of our business? Is it all centered on that, that Christ child? Or is our busyness sometimes more centered on ourselves and our own happiness. As we go about this busy time of the year, maybe it would be good for us to, to take note of one of the things that happened at that birth of Jesus on that, that first Christmas that's easy to be lost because it isn't something that was, was busy and active. We hear in that lesson from Luke chapter 2, that Mary, Jesus' mother, she treasured up all of those things that were happening and she pondered them in her heart. She paused. In the midst of all that business, she paused and she thought. She considered what the birth of that child meant for her. That that child she cradled in her arms and wrapped in swaddling claws was her seed. She paused, paused to consider what those angels undoubtedly said. We heard angels that proclaimed that this is the promised Savior, Christ the Lord. This was her God. And she held those arms. You know, earlier today, I was sharing a devotion with an elderly Christian woman on these very words from Luke chapter 2. And in the middle of my devotion, she interrupted me. And she interrupted me to say that, that she didn't think that many people stopped 
to ponder what that child meant. And then she went on to relate how when she was a child, her father on Christmas morning would pause in the middle of, of Christmas Day breakfast and he'd read those words from Luke chapter 2 and then he'd go around the table and ask all of the children what that child and his birth meant for them. And this woman wasn't just sharing a fond memory, she went on to say that when she became a parent, she and her husband didn't do that. She shared that she thought it, they were doing pretty well if they managed to get the kids dressed and ready for church on Christmas morning and out the door in time to arrive for services. And as she shared that, she, she expressed a little regret, wondering if all of the busyness that, that she and her husband had been occupied with had maybe robbed them of some of the true treasure of that celebration of Christmas. Do we pause? Do we ponder? Do we treasure up the fact that lying in that manger is a Savior who came for you and for me, who came to die for us? Do we pause and, and take time to reflect on, on all of those rich blessings that we heard in, in those lessons that were read early? Blessings of a Savior who was born for us, a Savior who came into the darkness of our world to give us light, and not only light, but <laughs> life. And not just any life, but eternal life. <coughs> oh, what riches are ours in that little Christ child lying in that <coughs> And so it's my prayer, it's my prayer that as you go about your celebration of Christmas, as you go about all the busyness this evening and tomorrow, that perhaps you might take some time, whether personally or with your family, to just pause, to take a step back from all of the busyness and all of the activity, all of the hustle and bustle, and to just think and ponder all of the rich treasures that are yours in that Christ child lying in the manger. May God bless your pondering of that infant who was born as your Lord and your Son. Amen. We'll continue with our next hymn.